What's going on everybody? My name is Mike Montgomery and today I'd like to show you how I made this wooden hanging pendant light using a lathe on Modern Builds. Right off the bat, I wanna give a huge thanks to Rockler for sponsoring this video. Throughout the video, you'll see me using these awesome carbide turning tools from them. They're an awesome option if you're just getting started with wood turning like I am. Instead of an edge that you'll have to constantly sharpen and grind and maintain, like traditional tools, these carbide tools have replaceable tips that you can spin to get a new edge, or once all your edges are done, you can replace it with a new tip. There'll be links for these along with all of the other Rockler gear I'm using in the description of this video. Also, huge thanks to Jet for providing this lathe. I reached out to them and they were nice enough to provide this lathe for this video. This is a 1440 VS lathe and it comes with the optional stand. I've only done one project on it, but I am really impressed with this lathe. If you're interested in it, there will also be links in the description. Thanks Jet, now let's get started. The first thing I did was to draw a rough sketch of what the pendant light might look like. I used the actual fixture I would be using so that everything was the right scale and the proper size. I just kept refining the shape until I had something that I liked, and then I just made sure that it was big enough so that the light bulb would fit in there as well. Once I had my shape, I moved on to making my blank that I'd be turning on the lathe. I got some 6 quarter maple from my local lumber supplier, and I cut that to length. Overall, this blank took 4 pieces, and I made sure that my lengths were long enough so that there would be room to attach the faceplate to the top of the blank. From all the wood turning forums that I visited, I found out that it's a good idea to use a lot of glue. You don't want any voids in your glue up. And I used this three piece silicone glue kit from Rockler to make sure it was all spread evenly. Once everything was clamped and glued up overnight, I moved back to my table saw and I cut my two ends square. I marked some quick layout lines so that I could center the faceplate as best as possible. Then I pre-drilled and screwed in eight screws. I used one and a half inch heavy duty sheet metal screws under the recommendation of some fellow wood turners. Apparently that's a great way to secure your piece, especially in end grain. Once it was locked in, I could attach it to my lathe. And for a little bit more support, I used a live center in my tail stock. And like I mentioned, I am a novice wood turner, so these carbide tools are great from Rockler. I'm using the square radius tool to get it into a rough cylinder. Compared to a standard square carbide tip, the square radius carbide tool helps prevent your piece from catching. I just kept turning this piece down until I got it into a cylinder. I didn't want to take too much because the blink I made wasn't much bigger than what the radius of the lampshade will be and I wanted to make sure that I always had plenty of tool rest to work with. So I worked on the front half of the blank, then I would move it and work to the second half. I wanted to make sure I was avoiding the faceplate and the screws while I was shaping everything, so I used my diamond carbide tool as a parting tool to mark that location. Then I picked up my round carbide tool and I worked on the shape. I wanted to find that radius over the top before I shaved anything else down. Once I had that established, I could go back to my square carbide tool and flatten out the rest of the pendant. I was really impressed with these tools. I got some nice shavings and was left with a really smooth, clean surface. I'm going to leave a link in the description to a series of videos from Brad Rodriguez from the channel Fix This Build That. It is six beginner lathe projects. It starts with a really simple project and simple materials and gradually increases in difficulty and skill. I really followed along on these projects to help get some of the basics down before I built this one. So thanks Brad, go check out those videos. Ingrain poses a whole new set of challenges than edge grain or face grain. It takes a lot more technique and it's something that I need to work to develop more. Instead of long smooth shavings, I was getting a lot of dust and particles which isn't exactly what you want. As I continued to hollow the piece out, I was able to get cleaner shavings and better ribbons, but I couldn't get my tool rest into the piece, so my tool kept trying to catch because it was too far from the rest. And Rockler does make a hollowing chisel with a carbide tip, and that would have been convenient because it has a longer neck. Once I had the shade roughed out, I got my light fixture and I removed the socket cover. I wanted to be able to use the socket in place to make sure one, I had the correct size Forstner bit, but two, to make sure I was drilling to the correct depth. I picked up a drill chuck for my tailstock and I inserted that Forstner bit into the chuck.
any decent Forstner bit will have a max RPM on it and you want to make sure that you set your lathe to the correct speed so you don't burn out your bit. After I drilled a test hole, I wanted to make sure that the socket would fit in there and once I knew it did, I drilled it to the correct depth. With the socket fitting in there securely, I switched over to a quarter inch bit and I drilled a hole for the wires to feed through as well. With the shaping done, it was time to move to sanding and Rockler makes this really cool multi-roll sanding pack that starts at 150 grit and works all the way up to 600 grit, which is a really smooth finish. And I attached the 150 grit strip to a scrap piece of wood so that I could get a really flat profile on this shade. Like I said, I'm not a great wood turner so I'm not getting a perfectly smooth finish and sanding is a great way to help smooth that out. I left a lot of meat on the end of this shade so that it wouldn't break while I was drilling the hole for the socket or while I was sanding. So now that the sanding was done, it was time to move to finishing the shape. Like I mentioned, I had a little bit of a challenge working with all of this end grain, so I used a little bit of wood filler to patch up anywhere that there was a void. After sanding everything smooth, I got my flush trim saw and I cut my piece off of the lathe. And obviously I didn't drill that quarter inch hole all the way through it on the lathe because I wanted to maintain the structural integrity, so from the top down, I drilled that all the way through. Once I had everything wired, I could go ahead and install a light bulb and test everything out. Lathe projects are something I've wanted to do for a long time. I did a couple in wood shop in middle school and I've wanted to do more ever since. So I think this was a great place to get started. It wasn't overly complicated and it wasn't too big of a project either. Let me know what you think down in the comments. So yeah, using a lathe is definitely not something that you're gonna be great at right from the get-go. There's a little bit of a learning curve and I definitely progressed a lot through this project. Carbide tools are a super easy way to get into it. I like the idea of using them because I can get technique, then I can learn how to sharpen. That way it's not too much all at once. I wanna thank Rockler one more time for the lathe tools as well as a bunch of lathe accessories. And I wanna give another big thanks to Jet for providing the lathe. Links for both will be in the description. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget, subscribe for more videos. More videos will pop up on the screen right here and we'll see you next time on Modern Builds.